What is good, YouTube? This is the FF Dynasty coming at you. Thank you so much for tuning in. Be sure to subscribe, like, and comment below with either love or if you're feeling like some hate, throw some shade down there. Either way, it all greatly helps us out so we can keep bringing you new content. What is good? It's the slurp edition of the FF Dynasty's Rookie Talk. We're back for episode two with our man, Angelo. That's at Angelo underscore fantasy on Twitter. You can find him his website at www.angeloanalysis.com. Um, this guy crushes it. Hey, Angelo. Casey, 1990 called. They want their WWW back. Whatever. <laughs> I like throwing the WWW in there. <laughs> WWW. I like it. HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash WWW. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> Angelo, how's it going, man? Man, it's going great, man. I appreciate you guys having me on again. A repeat yeah. offender. Yeah. yeah, well, let's. We left off. We took. We hit, go back and listen to episode one if you're just tuning in. We we covered a lot of ground. Uh, we're gonna just hit a couple more guys on the back end. Not sure we really have these guys necessarily ranked in any particular order. Is that correct, Angelo? That's yeah, just, I think, I mean, man, it's just might have a feeling on a couple guys that you like. Yeah, I, I think all these guys could have could have roles at the NFL level is the question is how big. OK, sounds good. All right, well, let's jump right into the guy who would have been probably RB one, two, three last year because people like those big numbers and, and crazy things. Mr. 2K, uh, the Canadian cowboy Chuba Hubbard. Um, Let's let's right. get right into him because I, I I find it interesting right now that six foot small two oh eight for yeah. those that don't know I think there's a there's a there's something to be uh, I think there's room to grow that frame another couple of pounds if he wants to if he can keep that functional speed with growing that frame anyway right. um, so. I just think it's interesting that he was just everywhere. People were all over him. Like he would have been such a high pick last year, and then he comes in and struggles a little bit. But there's some reasons if you dig dig into what was going on over there that there was some struggles going on. Um, the what overall, general, um, yeah. What, ecosystem, what maybe. <laughs> ah, drink. Love it. <laughs> um. What what's your thoughts on Chuba Hubbard? Because I mean, this is like I said, this is a guy in 2019, 2094 yards, six point four a carry, twenty one touchdowns, twenty three receptions, uh, one hundred ninety eight yards on those receiving uh, yards, and then two thousand twenty down to four point seven a carry, only five touchdowns, eight receptions. But the year before that, in two thousand eighteen, he caught twenty two balls. I think that's worth mentioning. Anyway, um, what are your thoughts here? Give us give us the lowdown, and then I'll tell you. For sure. I think he struggled. I think it's tough to always see a running back come back and struggle significantly, whether, whether it's with injury, just production in general, um, because, you know, other players in this class did the same thing and it worked out for them last year. I think pretty consensus, like ETM was going to be a late mid to late day two pick, right? He was probably going to be, he, in some circles, he was going to be a, you know, around the AJ Dillon range last year, that was going to be him. But what's happened now is we don't know where he's going to be. We don't really know why he decided to come back, what he needed to really prove. Um, Some of the guys who did come back and we talked about Harris before Harris needed to prove he was, he was the guy. He, he was a, he was a good pass catcher. He improved his accelerative qualities. He improved the top end speed. He had to prove that. And he did, and he might receive first round draft capital because of it, which is huge. Hubbard's going to be probably a late day two guy. Um, probably in the, I'd say the mid half of the third round, about the mid third round, I think is where he, where he's kind of being valued right now. Um, Great top end speed. He's the best top end speed of any back in this class. Um, Canadian track star. Um, he's a good, you know, good functional mover. Um, good in good in tight quarters. They go drink up. Um, but it's man, it's 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 always tough to see the production dip. And I, he, for the life of me, I don't know where how the NFL is going to value him. If there might be a team that gets excited um, and really likes him and takes him, you know early mid second round wouldn't be shocked. Um, but I just don't know what kind of role he's going to play at the NFL level. 
And that's kind of the tough thing is last year, if he would have came out, he, he would have probably been in a role, you know, immediately. Right. And now the, the running back position has become so saturated in my opinion that there's not too many landing spots. He's going to go and see significant work right away. Okay. So is that, if you, if you had to rank him kind of in these guys, is he, is he in the next tier or is he, is he now a full tier? Maybe I know you said you're not done with him, but like, mm-hmm. would he be in the consideration of the next tier or is he like just a full tier below those guys? Are we in tier three now? Are we done with tier two? Mm-hmm. I think he's in tier three. I think so. The start of tier three is he he's probably going to be in that mix. I think there's a, there's a lot, there's probably three, four, even five guys that could be in that mix. But he's a he's a teaser tier three guy for me in this class. Um, I just don't think there's a clear role and expectation from at the NFL level, um, and that's tough. Like all the other guys above him, we all know those guys are probably going to come in and command a significant workload in one way or another. You know, Kenneth Gamble is probably going to be you know a, a good receiving back off the bat. ETN is going to be the home run that that he is, and you know the other two guys, Williams and Williams and Harris, are going to you know be potentially bell cows. Um, Williams probably on the two down spectrum as well. Um, but man, it's tough. It's tough. We don't know where, we don't know where he's yeah. going to land. We don't know who values him high and that's going to be difficult coming in draft day. I think he cost himself some money. He for, sure. Sure. for sure. Oh, for um, sure. Bummer for but, him to come but back into that situation. He may have put himself in a better situation for himself, for that second contract being kind of, falling down the board a little bit to the Niners aren't going to the 49ers. Let's just say you said ETM would be a great player there. Chuba Hubbard would be fucking awesome at the same. Oh, for sure. 100%, 100%. Like that's a perfect system to, for him to fit in there. And the Niners aren't going to probably draft a guy and put the capital in somebody like ETN. So Hubbard could fall down to the third round and maybe the Niners say, Hey, let's snatch this guy up and just make our offense just absolutely elite. So there are some certain circumstances where it may have cost him some money, but it might actually help his game in the long run. Obviously you could probably make the argument either way. I'm making the argument pro Chuba uh, for sure. fantasy points here. Um, I, this is, I mean, he had 328 carries. It's not like he can't get a right. decent amount of carries. And right. Hold, that was, he that held was up 2000... that entire 19 season without any issues. Didn't miss a game. Um, and, right. And was, so for reference that 328 carries a lot of in carries. 2019 is five more carries than Javante Williams had in 19 and 20 combined. Um, he had 133 carries last year, Chuba that is, um, which was 20 less carries than Javante Williams in seven games compared to 11. So, I mean, he was still getting the ball a decent amount. Um, yeah. And, and that, that 328 is a significant number. So I think, I think Chuba, like for me, I'm, I'm taking Chuba ahead of Gainwell f- for sure, because I, I just, I, he's, he is a guy who I know is going to be at the running back position. And if he goes in, he's going to get, most there could be certain situations where he doesn't, but like the usage for him is as I know where it's going to be. Like, I know he's going to get running back potential gain. Well, there's unknowns about how the right person to use him. Um, now the system has to be right for Chuba Hubbard, just like the, the, the coach and the usage needs to be right. A lot of things need to be right for game. Well, to be in there. And then Hubbard then has an elite trait if not two elite traits, whereas Gainwell may not have an elite trait outside of catching the football, which puts him in a precarious situation because he is kind of more of a receiver than the running back. And Chuba is more of a, definitely more of a running back. Is is he, and and he does have the elite speed. And I I think that his change of direction and um, his, he has his quick hips and like his jump cuts and all that in small spaces and the way he moves around. And I think it's, I think it's very, very good. Now, is he a power running back? Absolutely not. Like he's not going to be running through, you know, all sorts of tackles at the line of scrimmage. But I do think you kind of said about ETN, how, you know, he may not be able to kind of pick what I forget what the exact terminology you used was about not being able to kind of manipulate um, mm-hmm. Yeah, defenders where I think Chuba Hubbard, I think that's one of the best parts of his game. I think the tempo of his game and the pace and the pace that he plays at and the patience, you see a lot of guys with elite speed, just be like, Hey, I got this elite speed. Look at this. Whereas sometimes you're like, he doesn't look all that fast out there. And then boom, he hits that crease and he's gone. 
And some people, you know, you look at YouTube, you watch the game film, you watch the highlights. Some people will be like, I could run through those creases. Yes, some of those creases you could run through. But some of those creases, I think, look so good because he's so fast and elite at getting t- to that space that it looks like, damn, that was a, a lane that somebody could have drove a truck through. But I think he gets into that lane and goes through that lane so fast that most guys can't even consider that. Right. So I think I think there's a lot of good things with Chuba Hubbard. Is he a power guy? No, that probably needs a little bit more of like a wide zone where I do think he does kind of pick, poke, slide. I think he's really good at manipulating. Yeah, yeah defenders. he is for sure. Um, and then talking about what happened this year, there, there's a lot of people on the team who will basically say he had that ankle injury the from, ankle the sprain, jump, from the jump. Yeah, from the jump. Him. They lost three linemen in the summer for various reasons, and then they lose two more starters week one. So their offensive line is decimated. Gundy on a quote says we're a little at a little disadvantage right now. We're playing guys that have never been at this level. And we have a bunch of new guys. Um, they played a little bit better this week, but we have a ways to go. And I, I believe that was after the, the second game of the season when they're putting all these guys out there. So you have Chuba with an ankle injury. You have Chuba with all sorts of bad offensive linemen. You have a QB carousel. Sanders was in and out injured again. Um, and, you know, they do have an elite wide receiver who's who's pretty interesting. Um, but, and then you have Mike Gundy and there was conflict there. There yeah, was, however you want to chomp it up, ton and of conflict. there was, there was, there was definitely some friction and right. So Mike Gundy was got, was on photo wearing an OAN t-shirt, which if you don't know what that is, um, cause you're like a normal person, uh, OAN is like, they're, they're a news channel and they basically make Fox news look liberal. That's how conservatively <laughs> right OAN is. And, you know, you got Mike Gundy who's sporting a mullet and a visor and all those things don't jive together. And then you've got Chuba, who's like an activist and he's, you know, out there standing for what he believes in. And he's like, I'm not, you know, I think it was like a voluntary workout he was supposed to report to. And he's like, I'm not doing anything until we talk about some change here. And uh, and so, you know, that started in the offseason and, and, and Gundy came out and apologized and, under you know, he said the, all the right things. But I mean, come on, you knew what that you, you know. And in the, yeah, in the back of your head, man. I mean, uh, like it was a perfect storm for Chuba Hubbard in terms of things that could have gone wrong. Right, right. He's all also, of them did. He's also Canadian. He couldn't go home to see his family at all. Like he's, they're not letting anybody in. Oh, it's like, bad. Canada, I mean, Canada it was, is completely yeah. different. And th- then, then people were coming out and say he quit on the team, and then like his teammates are coming out and saying like this guy had no reason to even be here for half of the season. Like he could have walked away from the team, went back to Canada, lived his life. He didn't need to be here and he stuck it out. And then in that Oklahoma game, you see him playing, busting off a couple of runs and he's certainly still not right. He could be fucking his whole NFL career up with right. this shit. He came back because he fucking loves this team and he's a good dude. And, he, uh, you know, you said Najee Harris came back because he needed to prove this or that. Maybe Najee Harris and Travis Etienne wanted to come back because they love their guys and you're never going to get this opportunity again. Maybe I actually want to get a degree. Maybe, you know, maybe I just want to try to win another national championship. Like there, there's right. all sorts of reasons to come back for guys. And we just throw those to the wayside because of, you know, wow, go get this money. But like, it's not, right. it's not that for everybody. And so I think there are a lot of reasons for Chuba Hubbard struggles this year. And he didn't look quite himself on the uh, same on the field. Right. He didn't look like the same Chuba Hubbard of But when you gave him 20 carries, he averaged 110 yards. Like there was, right. there was, there was goodness there. And he's a make your play in one day. He's a guy who ran and all 2000 yards are not created equal in my opinion. Um, and we, we hate, I, I've hate, I hated on Rashard Penny when he had his 200 yards. Cause I didn't think his yards after contact were created equal. All yards after contact are not created equal either. Like the way you're tracking those stats and you know, it could be an arm brush or a, a shitty arm tackle in a shitty conference. And that arm, now you busted right. off a 60 yard run. A lot of Javante Williams yards after contact came against Duke, you know, like, <laughs> But man, I I just think I, I'm not I'm not gonna be out on Chuba Hubbard. Like, yes, there certainly is a lot of saturation with players in the NFL at the running back position, but he's a guy who could be the one A in the situation rather than the one B, in my opinion. Um, and I, I don't think his pass catching is necessarily an issue. No. People say he's an unnatural pass catcher. He's not the most natural pass catcher, but he can catch. Like hey, it's it's an average trait. Like right. that, that's the thing. It's not, it's good enough. It's okay. It it's is not a liability. I mean, a lot of the backs in this class, like there are really only two backs 
that you're like, these guys, this, these are receive, like these guys are like receiving back. Like these guys right. can go out and split out wide and, or play in the slot. The rest just have, there's some better than others, but I mean, like ETN, right. Average skill set of his, right. But like Hubbard, it, that's not going to, like, it's not going to matter. If you, if you get him in space, throw him the ball, you scheme. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's going to be a scheme dependent thing for, for Hubbard. but yeah, you said a lot of great things. I think, I think Hubbard is going to be a player um, that could be an absolute draft day steal in both your rookie drafts and the NFL draft. Because if he is 2019 Chuba, which he very well should be, he's going to be absolutely electric and supremely fun to watch. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, so I, I don't even have him all that far behind Javante Williams, if not still ahead of him. Like I fucking love, okay. I, I like, like Chuba that. Hubbard. Like I think the dude's fucking good. Obviously there are, I think you could have a guy who's not a three down back in Javante as well. Who's, but just different stylistically and Chuba, I would give the maybe advantage there because it's bigger, bigger chunk plays possibly for that guy instead of, whereas you might get, it's probably a wash and that's probably a silly thing to say. You probably get more 12 to 15 yard plays from, Javante. Javante, where it could have been a three yard play and he turns it into 12 and 15. Whereas Chuba, there could be a lot of right. net net three yard plays to a 60 yard play. No. Yeah. Uh, no, I'm totally makes sense. I think it's, you know, touchdown potential, a lot of stuff kind of goes into the factor too. But I think honestly, outside of tier one, it is pretty close. And in, in my opinion, I, it's going to really depend on where they go, their environment, who's their coach, their play caller, and how they like to use the running back and who they have in the backfield with them in terms of, you know, their running mates. Right. Um, but yeah, I mean, man, you're right. Chuba could very well come in the NFL and be a 1A. I'm, what if he's the, what if he goes to Buffalo and it's just him, Devin Singletary and Zach Moss. You're telling me that Chuba Hubbard is not going to beat out Devin Singletary. Yeah. Zach. Of course he is. I, I just worry about the opportunity in that offense. See, this exactly. year they just, there's, they just there's question marks in so many it. offenses. And that's, that, that's, and that's the intriguing part about this class in particular. Chuba in Arizona, so Chuba much. in San Francisco, those, and, and the, those kind of places intrigue right. me. And I think he will stick, stick around a little bit longer than he right. would have and be able to have maybe some of those teams grab For him. sure. Well, I think um, be the comment better. that you made, uh, Angelo about, um, just, I don't know what situation, like, there's not a lot of great situations right. for any of these guys to go into. And that, that's kind of a point that you're making about how it, it's, it can be oversaturated um, in terms of, you know, NFL talent on these rosters. And, and, you know, you got these undrafted free agents or like a seventh round pick in Miles Gaskin and, and uh, coming in and, and, and showing really well and getting a lot of production when given that opportunity. And you're just not sure where we can create this opportunity from, but, what I what like we're playing dynasty here, and to me the situation can change so drastically so quickly. Oh yeah, that I just want to stack talent on my team, and I and, and when it comes to putting running backs on your roster, I feel like there isn't a ton of guys that you can just throw down there. I mean, that are just uber talented, and, and maybe you could argue against this, but like. I just feel like the talent with Hubbard is, is so good as a runner. It's just so fluid and like everything, there's just no wasted movement and the varying pace that he, that he plays with, like he lulls you to sleep. And then when they hit, there's no hesitation. Once the hole opens up, he's got really quick feet. He's got single step efficiency. I'm going to steal that uh, line from oh, okay. you. Angelo. Um, I think the vision is spectacular. The mm. cutbacks through tiny holes, like he's just, the, the, the pad level is, is, is phenomenal and just there's just so many good things about him. And then I'm willing to make a bunch of excuses for why that production took a hit this past year that sure. I'm still, I can't knock this dude for 2020 too much. You know what I mean? I like it. It was man. 2020. Uh, you know? I know. <laughs> man, it, it, man, it, absolutely. 2020. <laughs> God damn it. I mean, yeah, I mean, he could be, Hey, if he is a top, he ends up being a top three back in this class. I'm not surprised at all, but you know, like, like I said, it, it's more so, when we're talking about landing spot, it's not that they can't prove that they're talented. It's just, they have a lot more in their way. Sure. And it's when, it, when will that take effect? Right? Like their early career success, you know, might not come for eight weeks or sure. 10 weeks or, or even, two or two or, you know, or three years that, that happens right. all the time when it's, you know, you, you see it like you see it this, with this year with Jonathan Taylor, like, 
Right. Man, everybody was out on JT. Oh, we traded him. That's what we kept weeks. saying. We literally do jokes. We talk it, about this all the time that the patience is the worst asset worst. of every dynasty owner out there. It's just, it's absolutely. Just oh, he's patient. Trent. He's Trent. He's, he's Trent Richardson. He's Trent Richardson. He's a boss. <laughs> he's a boss. Oh, it's, I mean, yeah. I mean, but like, we got to be really patient with these rookies. It's going to take for me. Like I always Cam say, it takes, it, yeah, exactly. It takes a year to a year and a half to figure out what these guys are going to be at the NFL level. Cause even if they have success year one, Year two is a big tell because NFL teams have 16 games of tape on these guys right? and how they're utilized and how they're exactly. schemed. Right. That's the, that's the tough thing is can these guys develop um, in spite of defensive players playing to take them out, like take them out of the game plan. Yeah. And that's, that's important. Um, year two is the biggest tell for me. Um, that's why I think it's funny because we talk about the 2019 class. Like, what do you do with, those three guys like Montgomery Sanders Jacob, and Jacobs. Sanders. Yeah. Like I'm still in on all of them. Like I'm, Exactly. Like, like you I'm gotta good. be, you gotta be in like, the usage sucks on Jacobs. Miles Sanders it, had some good times see, and some bad times. It's like, just, it's, see, it's so up and down. Like if we had this conversation last year, you're thinking Josh Jacobs, Miles Sanders, those are bona fide candidates for pot- RB high end RB one potential. Mm-hmm. But now we're looking at them like, Oh, I man. still feel that way with Jacobs and Miles Sanders potentially, but I just it's the usage that And that's the tough thing know. is and Jacobs now, isn't being used as a receiver. And that, that was ridiculous. one of the biggest assets out of high, out college. Right. He was such a good receiver out of college. I chartered Jacobs and he was he was he would be the second highest back in this class, not named not named Najee. Yeah. But holy cow. Like he was a high end producer in terms of what he brought to the table on film. And you're like, okay, this guy's going to come into the NFL and be a three down back and catch 50, 60 balls yeah. and have 1600 total yards, you know, in one of his first two seasons. Yeah. And yeah. he has been a little banged up and they had offensive line issues throughout the year yeah. with COVID and injuries. So I, I'm, st- I'm still, I love Josh Jacobs oh, for in general, sure. for so sure. I'm going to be for patient. Sure. And I just traded for Miles Sanders before the season ended to try to help me win a championship, which he did. Um, with that, with a little Jalen Hurts uh, action, like it there, and I still think Miles Sanders is is plenty good. I'm not upset about it. I'd be buying at his current price right now. But anyway, take us through these last couple guys. Sure. I'm gonna get out of the way. If you want to kind of casually go through them in, in an order that you have them, or just say, hey, I like this guy more than a little more than that guy. I think Jay Wayne has some stuff to add while yeah. going through these guys. But take us through the last uh, couple of guys we got here. For sure. Oh uh, yeah, Jay, just just hop in whenever. Uh, I'll probably just, I'm gonna just go through our kind of our show sheet in terms of the list we had them. Um, I think Ramondre Stevenson's probably the most intriguing one to talk about because he's the biggest riser out of any of these guys. Uh, I think like the a big tell for me that like he's in for a really interesting pre-draft process. He weighed in at 228. For those of you who don't know, I thought he was like 246 or something. He he weighed in at like I guess on Oklahoma's website before his before the season, 247. So, which I didn't think he looked that big. I was like, that must be a I mean, ton that's a of big boy, right there. That's a big boy. Compact. That's a big boy. But I mean, that I mean, that's a big. You know, that's huge, right? I mean, like for his overall, I guess outlook. I mean, that's fantastic. I mean, you don't for I mean, him to drop down to two. Yeah. What did you two, say he dropped down to? Two twenty eight. Um, that's huge, and I think there's a lot to like about him. I mean, I think you know, even at his playing weight, I think he played right around two forty. Um, he's a junior college transfer, averaged nine and a half yards a carry and 2,100 yards in junior college. Like phenomenal. He like on like probably the second best junior college running back prospect that they, I guess, Juco has had since Camara. Mm-hmm. Um, but he made a big jump as a receiver from, from his first year out of junior college to second being this season. He had no games over 30 receiving yards in 2019 in 12 games. And he had three out of the six games this year. He had over re- he had over 30 receiving yards and obviously only six games. So we saw that jump as a receiver for him, um, which is a big deal being now 228 pounds, being a, being a bigger back. Um, that was a big deal. And he had over 90 yards, 90 total yards or more in every game he played this year. Um, and he looked the part of an NFL running back. And I think for him, it's going to draft capital is going to be a tell of what the NFL really thinks of him. He's a guy that some people are saying can rise up into early day two, uh, I don't, 
I could, I actually could see that. I don't think he's that high, but maybe you no know, wait second round, but he's a guy who can move up, up, up with, with a strong senior bowl. And I think that's going to be a big deal for him is really, really showing that he is a, you know, a, a true three down threat at the senior bowl and kind of outplaying some of those big names that are down there right now. Yeah. Well, me and Oklahoma right now, we're broken up on drafting Oklahoma running backs, but um, I think inc- like Trey Sermon, like I like the guy. We're going to talk about him in a minute. Another Oklahoma running back who's just damaged goods. Rodney Anderson damaged goods. Oh, Rodney Anderson. Oh, P. Ryan oh, broke my heart. Like, that hurts. Joe Mixon, love the guy, still drafting him, but WTF, like just. Right. But I don't know. I'm, I'm just kind of trying to stay out of this as much as I can because I don't know. I haven't seen very much uh, Stevenson. No, you know, he's, he's, a, he's a good player, man. He's, you know, he's, Rattler struggled, Jay, what do you think, struggled in early. But I'm super uh, interested in Stevenson. Um, I think that's very uh, – I think you saying that he cut that weight, I don't know that he actually played at – that heavy at Oklahoma because like I was saying he didn't look 246 like he looked Dude, 246 is that's a, I, I would say around I'd say 235 to 240 he played at and that's and that's that, like, it must be a lot big of boy. muscle though because he's he's all his ass he's thick um so and he's for a him, big boy for him to move huh, like he does um I'll drink for that one he uh He's 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 a fast big guy. Um, I think he is faster big guy. I think the acceleration is pretty good, and the overall speed for as big as he is is really well. Um, I I like his patience that he exhibits. Um, I think he sees the field well. I, I'm impressed with the vision. Um, sometimes I could question the balance, but then there's other times where it's like, man, he he did show some good contact balance. I um, mean, he's deliberate about getting north and south and that that momentum builds so quickly and then he's he's tough he's a tough dude to deal with when he gets rolling um well, he and fucking then should be to show that that um well but but he but he's he doesn't just rant, you know it's kind of like AJ Dillon we people knocked him for not showing as much power and it's like if he just ran into the three yards in a cloud of dust every time he'd be mad that that's all he did um and and we said you know that Dillon had sweeter feet than what that type of size of a dude would show, and I think the same can be said for Stevenson. The way that, that he moves around, um, he, he he does get caught um, from behind, but he he can bust off 50, 60 yard runs. Yeah, he's and, not slow. He's he's he's, he's not right. slow. The height adjusted speed score, which now if he's down to two twenty eight, might not be as high. But I was I was shooting for like the hundred tenth percentile or something. <laughs> Uh, for that, but not super intrigued. And, and like you said, I think he showed some good hands. There were some good catches. Yeah, there. no, he's um, average receiver. three catches Nothing a crazy, game yeah. last year. Not, not a ton, but like we say here all the time, he can catch and all these dudes can. And that's all I need is a couple dump downs. If you're going to be uh, that type of runner where he's going to be getting goal line situations and, and, and he can, he could potentially be a three down back. I mean, I want to have him higher than I do. And I don't necessarily know where I have him, but I am super intrigued. Yeah, no, absolutely. I think you know he's going to be a player that's going to be interesting to watch the Senior Bowl Saturday. Um, what he does and how he looks against those guys is going to be important. And I think the next player that we were going to talk about is a guy you brought up, Trey Sermon. Um, it's so tough because you're the durability is the biggest concern with Sermon. Sure. I think he is a second round talent as a pure talent. But the durability, is, it's concerning. He he had the knee, and then he had – I think he broke his collarbone most recently. I think well, that's what it was. They didn't – But what they come out – some thing. That, that, that's the thing. I, I tried to read about this injury history because I kind of knew there was one, and, and, like, I read about a leg injury, an ankle injury, and, yeah. and then he had a knee injury that required yep. surgery. Yep. Um, and then, obviously, he left the Natty, natty the, the National Championship, after the first play of the game, and then they rushed yeah. him to the hospital. And yeah. the only thing I could find was that his mom said he was okay. <laughs> <laughs> like that's all and i i don't know what type Enough of knee injury he had i don't know what Mama he said was. he's good he's fine right yeah. I, she declined to, to to you know speak on any type what type of injury that's it was or whatever and like i know he had knee surgery but i don't know yeah. what, what on i don't know if it was i mean he just runs or, so he just runs hard i mean man oh dude he is a dude he's man. yeah and it's i mean i think he it's it's like chris carson where Dude runs so hard, but is Chris Carson ever healthy? No, never. He's <laughs> never healthy. I mean, he's he, the last year. He's, 
Bias isn't great, but he did have a couple seasons there where he was winning you leagues. If you oh for sure, but he was he was banged up all the time. That's what I mean. Like he's not sure, he's not going to sure. be he's not going to be fresh legs. No, 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 that's not. But he's a good Trey Sermon's a good player. Yeah. Um, I think the medical part of it will be interesting to see how that plays out. Um, obviously, there's no combine this year. Right, mm-hmm. but and they might not even have a chance to examine him medically, which so, really hurt his draft stock. So that's why because, I don't know. That's that's right. where I don't know what the protocols are going to be this year to examining guys medically with, especially with like fairly significant. I mean, he went to the hospital for crying out loud, like right. during the national championship game. Right, yeah, that's not not sig- that's yeah. not not significant. And if he did break his collarbone, that's a pretty decent injury for a running back too. Right, right. I mean, obviously, like. You, I don't like know he, if he broke his collarbone. You, no, I don't know. But I mean, you can obviously, you can like the return to play is fine. Like you're, he'll be back by, you know, probably training camp um, or a little later, but we don't know. So and that's the thing is, does the NFL not know? And if they don't know, how much does that hurt his stock? And if they do know, yeah. does that hurt his stock too? And that's like the weird thing is like, we, we just don't know. Right. So he's a well, risk but he's a good player when he's healthy. I think you get him at a discount because of that risk. And I think, I mean, there's a lot of, there's a lot of players this year. I think that you're going to get at a discount because of that inherent risk. If they got hurt or they had a down senior year. Um, but yeah, he's definitely a risk, but he's one that could definitely pay off. I think. Yeah. I think he has the potential to be a monster three down back because the oh, yeah. skills are very impressive on so many levels. Um, he comes in at 215 pounds, so that settles it, right? Like he's he he weighs enough. He must be good if he weighs 215, right? <laughs> um, which I, I mean, he's a force. Like to me, he plays bigger than 215. Um, As a, he, he plays big, that's for sure. Like he goes into like I the best way for me to describe is like tarantula mode, where he like he takes his off hand and he's just like clawing his way, like he's he's just like using it for balance uh, to just weave through multiple you know tacklers. Like people are just bouncing off of him and whether whether defenders are getting ran through sidestepped stiff armed hurdled or just straight out ran he 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 has like all the tricks in the bag and like I've done everything I can to block out what he did to Clemson in in the in the playoff game I've tried to block that out of my mind but I can't because he was He's on good. peak he was it was peak sermon that you saw during that game um, because yeah, there's not a ton good. that I could find to watch on him in prep for the show to talk about him with you. Like there's like a couple games that lead up to the Clemson game. And, and like, y- you could tell he wasn't himself in that early. I this is no, the was Northwestern was. game was the big one. Right. Well, yeah. that was the second game they had. He had oh, right. 300 one. yards. <laughs> yeah. I watched that live. That was nuts. Dude, that was crazy. And, and that, that play where he busted off the 70 yard run. It's like he, his, his, running style so physical and, and angry that he doesn't always exhibit the speed that, that he has. But when he decides to turn that burst on, it's like, whoa, that's a huge dude moving. And, you know, he he he, he busted off a 70-yard run versus Northwestern. Now it was well right. blocked, but, I mean, he you saw peak speed there. And, I mean, and, and, and talking about that play, goddamn, Justin Fields, he ran down. Like, he it was a – he handed the ball off and then did a, a, a boot, you know – continued the fake of the boot and he just took off and he almost made the block to spring that run shout out to justin fields because that shit was amazing to watch that dude run all the way down the field and uh because i'm i'm like mike greeny i think they should just airlift the the qb off the field with a helicopter after the (laughs) after the ball's out of his hands because they they're worth so much money like they shouldn't be running 70 yards down the field to make a block but shout out to, Uh to him but I think he's a phenomenal runner. I think he's a a pretty good receiver too. Like he looks yeah. very fluid in the receiving game. Yeah, he's a good player, man. All just, around, it's it's just the. I mean, he, like I said, he's, I think he's a he's a second round talent. But it's right. just going to be. I want. Will he medically check out as such? Is the big question. And right. then, yeah, I think he's. I, I don't know. I don't really think about the medical stuff because we don't know. But I think talent wise, you could be getting a steal in the second round of rookie drafts. All right. All right. Um, well, I mean. You want you want to take us through Michael Carter real quick and then get out of here? Sure, it sounds good. Um, I, the thing with Carter is you just watch him play. He does little things well. Efficient, good decision maker. He's just he's a good football player. Uh, I think he weighed in a little bit over 200, 200 pounds. So he's five seven, like two oh two. So a really interesting Strong build. BMI baby. So that means he's yeah, good. BMI, interesting build. BMI means he's good. Um, similar build to Clyde Edwards Hilaire actually. 
Um, but he's a good player. I think he's going to be a good secondary option at the next level, a good complimentary option to a, to another back. Uh, I put in the show notes, I think he would be a nice complimentary option to Miles Sanders. Um, I think kind of being the next Boston Scott in that regard of, of, you know, being a kind of a receiving threat. I think he's a good receiver, not great, but also being able to be an efficient rusher. Uh, I think he's going to be, you know, a guy who's on schedule, who knows his assignments, um, who doesn't deviate much, um, but he's a good player. He's a really good player. Um, and I think that he's going to be someone who's in, just watch where he lands. If he lands somewhere where he can get significant work, potentially he could be a producer because of just, he's just super efficient, nothing flashy, but I mean, gets North and South um, sets up defenders really, really well at the second level. Um, but I just, I like watching the kid play football. He's just, he's just a good football player. Um, him and the guy like Jared Patterson, um, the guy from Buffalo. Yeah. Um, oh man. It's just those, those dudes are just good football players, despite their yeah. size, they can just play. And depending on where they land, they might get ample opportunity, but if he does, I think, you know, Carter's going to take advantage of it. Yeah, I, I struggle with Carter because, I mean, it's it's definitely fun to watch. I mean, he's an oh, exciting yeah. Yeah. he's an exciting player. I have down here, he's an abrupt accelerator. Yep. Uh, the feet are extremely quick. Um, he's a slicer. He also knifes. I guess if you slice, you probably by proxy knife as well. Um, but just, just watching him efficiently move his way around blocks and then to see – I mean, he's definitely. I think he's he's faster than Javante Williams is. Um, he's not like elite fast, but he is pretty damn fast. He's good speed, yeah. Good um, speed, not great, but yeah, I agree with that. And I, you know, I just I just don't know what to do with him. I don't know where to rank him. I don't know how this is going to translate to the NFL. I don't know how he's going to be used. I want him to be faster than he is. I want him to be better receiver than he is. Although I do think it's pretty decent receiving ability, um, but. You know, I don't want to knock him because he's a little small, um, but I, I like the fact that he's short and still thick. Like his BMI is actually thirty uh, in the thirty range, which I think is about where you want your <laughs> fucking BMI. Um, but I don't know. It'll be interesting to see where he lands. Definitely an exciting but, player. I wouldn't yeah. mind taking a stab on for sure. All right, boys. Well. I was I was gonna talk about the BMI King at the end here, Devontae Smith, but oh, I, I don't want I don't want to I don't want to I don't want to tie up any more of your time, Angelo. So no, that's cool. That's cool. You, you you good for five more five more minutes? Yeah. Sure. What, what was your all right? What was your question on Smith? Where do you have him ranked essentially? And I swear to God, if you have like just eight a list of eight dudes in front of him, where I'm not using any of this, <laughs> we're gonna cut it out. <laughs> <laughs> Um, top two and not two. What's that? Top two and not two. Top two and not two. Okay. Word. <laughs> top, top two. No, I mean, in, in all honesty. So here's how I have Smith. Smith to me is probably the most unique talent, the position that we've seen the better part of a decade, because there's a guy who dominated the sec being the sole, the sole, I guess, legitimate, a, you can elite receiving target on his team after Jalen Waddle went down. It was the Devonta Smith show. And then Najee, obviously Najee Harris co-stars in that. That's what I'm saying. Um, but man, I mean, the guy had five 200 yard games over he his career. Broke everything. Like, if he didn't dude, leave the he national had championship. Yards and half the national championship. Yeah. Like it's just, I, I get the size concern, but do I though? He's functionally strong. And I said the Matt Rhea stuff, and I'll say it again. Yes, please. The guy is an absolute athlete. He is probably the most incredible curve linear accelerator I've ever seen in field sport. That is saying a lot if you don't know what that means. So watch Devonta Smith run um, like a corner post. Doesn't lose speed. Stays in the inside edge of his foot, explodes out of the break. No chance, no chance in touching him. Um, but when we're talking about okay, it's it's been Jamar Chase versus Devonta Smith. Here goes this. Both are very good football players. And if you have either on your team, be happy because yeah. those are two guys that I have they have a chance to be gold jacket caliber players. 
they are that good and we have to appreciate them appreciate them while they while they're here because there's not often where you see an 165 pound kid dominating SEC defensive backs on a weekly basis. Right. Doesn't happen if you're not elite. Them right. boys are trying to jam him and they can't. They can't. Because it, it's just, man, I could talk with Devontae Smith for, for days. <laughs> I think he's well, the Maybe most we'll do unique. a receiver show and have you back. Sure. I mean, he's the most unique talent we've seen in the position. The way I have That's, them graded right now, those are very, the wide receiver ranks are pretty preliminary. But right. Devon, Devonta Smith's junior season was worse than Jamar Chase's junior season. However, Devonta Smith's senior season was better than Jamar Chase's junior season, grade wise. Mm -hmm. Do with that what you will. Right. But you're splitting hairs. They're sure saying one, but they're completely different players. Sure. I mean, Devonta Smith is <laughs> I call him Slender Man because the dude is absolutely terrifying when he shouldn't be. Right. Like defensive backs don't know what to do. Right. Like they, they don't know they, they you can't, you can't press him because he, he's a 10, 600 meter guy. So he's going to he has his chance of blowing right by you. If you take a false step, he's gone, but you can't play off him too. Cause he's so good in this short to intermediate game. Um, but man, he's just fun to watch. I, I love talking about him. I, I love watching the kid play and he's me a, a kid that you root for because there's no one else like him. Like there is no other Devonta Smith. Yeah. Like he's a well, one then, of a kind and player. And I think that's where it gets twisted and people have problems because it's just like, well, this never happens and BMI and breakout age and dominator. And it's like, who stop it. Stop all of this stuff. Watch him fucking play. There is just a specialness about him. The way he moves on the field. It's fucking special. It's dude just awesome. glides. Right. It's, it's so much like, fun, man. There He's is so just, fluid. Just awesome. Man. There's nothing you can do about it. Everybody in the stadium knows that motherfuckers getting the ball. and They still <laughs> couldn't stop it. Like he could do a little, little bubble, little, what, whatever, however you want to do it. Like good. Like just the way he moves about on the field. That's all you need to know. Yeah, he's, he, just, he's just super unique. He, he's a fun player. I think this receiving class is pretty good. Um, him, Chase, and Wild are all just damn good yeah, players. Yeah, and, and do I? I don't. I haven't. I haven't even touched any receivers yet. I've, we're, we're strictly on running backs right now, and we'll be that way until we're pretty close to done with it. But I don't know if I have Chase over over Devonte Smith. I have no idea. I'm not sure. I, I have absolutely no idea. But the list pretty much. I don't need to watch the rest of the guys. The right. list pretty much ends after that. And I don't I really care if you're coming at me with fucking eight more dudes and then Devonte Smith because he's because of how he's About. built like fucking you ha just watch <laughs> stop right. stop it like there's some right. things that's like oh well he's he'd be a huge outlier that's fine there's so many dudes who are at the elite level of the nfl that are these fucking outliers give me all playing. the outliers give like, me all the outliers yeah, all the great it, players it, that these analytical people could not figure out why they were good i mean it, it's all. interesting because i mean I, I i respect analytics and i respect i do too all and i don't work it's when it's the it's, absolute where is, you're just going to dismiss him because he's, he's this he's one of we we will probably not see a, a devonta smith in some time right because Sometimes he's just so he's just just different. So unique. they're just yeah. him he's exactly. been gifted by some whatever being out there and i'm sure he's a ridiculously <laughs> hard working person you know, however, he just has it. Watch great kid, play. too. Really right. good kid. Great character. I mean, just wants to just just wants to help his team win. Right. And, and I just man, I, I mean, if, he, if he's a he, he has a chance to be the top five pick. Think of this in the air we are in. We're in 2021. We have DK Metcalf in the NFL. Not too far from move from Calvin Johnson. We have AJ Brown, Julio Jones still in the league and a kid who's 165 pounds is going to be a top five pick potentially. Yeah. Well, Think I about mean, that. That's crazy. And, and I get like, I know, I know that people can't wrap their head around it because of it's how crazy. he's built and who he is and all these things that go against him. And it's just like, if he busts, he busts, like if he busts, whatever, like I'm going to take a chance. Like there is there's just specialness around. Yeah. He, he's it. Got, yeah. I agree just, that, yeah. We don't need to quantify every single little bit of thing. Watch it to sit out 2020. I think. Yeah. Yeah. I just, man, 
Yeah, I'm know. gonna take the swing on Devontae. I mean, if he busts, he busts. But if he it's hits, also, it's, it's also it's also not the fucking game. it's also not the NFL of nineteen fucking ninety nine <laughs> or nineteen eighty. Like they can't you, you can't, can't touch hit receivers. You can't hit people over the it's all offensive slanted. Like Calvin Ridley wasn't supposed to be good either. That dude's fucking awesome. Like yeah. I, I didn't I didn't really ever love Hollywood Brown, but it wasn't because of how he was built. I just didn't really love his game per se. But He's not not good. It's just the system that he plays in. Like yeah. he has big, big games and big time. But if he was surrounded with a different style of right. offense, like I think he could be really yeah, good. It's just, like, it just it's definitely interesting because if you look at players built like him, it's they don't get the ball in the way Smith does. Smith gets the ball, manufactured touches over the middle of the field on outbreaking routes down the field everywhere. Right. Everywhere. And he's a nightmare to cover because he can do everything well. Right. And that's the tough thing. And he, like, if you look like his limb length, he has longer arms than Antonio Gandy Golden. Right. Like, for he's as long of arms as Colin Johnson. Colin Johnson's it's six. Huge. Six. Yeah. That's the new, he's just an absolute unique player. And I don't know what he's going to be in the NFL. No one does. But an NFL team, if an NFL team risk a top five selection, Top five selections are you're pretty sure they're gonna hit guys. Right. If they risk a top like the Miami Dolphins take them at three, which very well could happen, that tells me truly all I need to know about how the NFL views this kid. Yeah. I mean, it's just, you know, Robbie Anderson. He I mean he's, he's good. Not a bad player. No. Right. He got in the right system BMI. and absolutely crushed it this year. Like I just I just there's I get it. I understand the anal. I'm not, I don't want to, I hate coming on here and absolutely just being such a dick about it, but it's just like, God, they're such assholes. They about started it. The staunchness of like, there's no way this guy can be good because of, of X, Y, and Z. And it's like, yeah, I get it. Like there, there are some thresholds here that, that make decision yeah. makings and people fall into categories, but this is just, this one's just different. Yeah, I agree. I, I, he, he's like you said, he just, he's a different we haven't seen a Devonta Smith yet. Yeah. And that's the unique part is, I mean, how has a hundred, cause you have the 170 pound player or less ever won the Heisman. No, I, I mean, don't think so. The last time a fucking receiver won the Heisman. Exactly. I mean, the kid's good. So I'm it was a weird year, him. but I, and yeah, if Waddle I'm wouldn't excited. have gone down, he probably wouldn't have had 20 touchdowns, but. Oh no. I mean, I think that that offense revolved around, you know, Smith and Harris. I mean, and, and again, you said it at the jump from when we started talking to him, like, all right, you lose Waddle. And now all of a sudden, like, this is the, the guy, this is the guy. Stop him. And stop even him. You, you this saw is even, the guy to stop yeah. and they can't. And you saw even last year when you had the litany of talent, you had Judy rugs, Waddle. He was still Harris. making those plays like, God damn. Who's that guy? You, who was, who dare, who, who did um, LSU put on, the, on the Alabama receivers? Yeah. They put, Singly, singly on yeah. Devonta Smith, right. not on rugs, not on Judy, not on Waddle, because he was the best receiver, even statistically, last season. Right. At Alabama. And, you know, I'm happy that it's really kind of shown through, but I think him and Waddle are better than Judy and Ruggs. Oh, I mean, yeah, I, I could get down with that. I don't know yeah. too much about Waddle. I do really, I did really like Jerry Judy, but I like Judy. But I, Waddle's a Waddle's also kind of a unique anomaly. player. Yeah. I think he's a man. I was talking to I was talking to Ray about this too, and I was like, the guy's Devin Hester, but a receiver. He gives me those vibes as a Bears fan in particular. Like when you watch Devin Hester play, whenever he touched the ball, you're like, here it goes right. He's holding your like, breath. They hold you, some some special is going to happen, and that's the vibe you kind of get from uh, Jalen Waddle. I mean, he's the he's the best special teams player, right? Like I'm kicking partners that we've seen since Hester, and it's fun to watch him too. I mean, yeah, both those guys are th both those guys are be top twelve picks for yeah. sure. All right, guys, I appreciate it. Let's wrap this thing up. Let's get you out of here. We appreciate Anytime. all the time you gave Anytime. us. Anytime. Thank and, you uh, so much, Angelo, for coming hey, on, man. man. Anytime. Appreciate it, guys. Thank we'll you. We'll have you back at some point to talk maybe some receivers or something. Keep it a little shorter. Perfect. All right, man. Have a good one. At Angelo underscore fantasy. Hit him up on the Twitter. Oh, yeah, yep. Check out his website. HTTPS <laughs> colon forward slash forward slash www 
angeloanalysis.com for your pleasure. A ton of information. He spells it. Not only does he spell it out for you, but there's good visuals on there as well. Appreciate it. Uh, Be sure to check it out. Thanks for everything you do, Angelo. Uh, Appreciate you coming on and giving us your time, man. It was uh, spectacular. And I hope you have a good... uh, Hope things are going great for you in 2021. Appreciate it, guys. I, I Hey, have me on any time, man. I had, a, I had a blast again. Uh, I appreciate you guys having me on. And have a good evening. We'll talk soon. All right, bud. Thanks, All guys. Right. Appreciate Thanks, it. Thanks, everybody. Peace.